Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How many know God is preparing me for everything that comes in your life? He's preparing me. That's one of my favorite songs by the late, great Daryl Coley. And, and every once in a while when you feel down, you have to realize that this life is nothing but a test. And this life is nothing but preparation for eternity. And once you put those things into perspective, you will realize that all it is is preparation. Amen. Well, today we'll be talking about your faith will be tried. Your faith will be tried. That's our subject for tonight. Your faith will be tried. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And it reads as follows. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That the trial of your faith, much more precious than of gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor of and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. I just read First Peter chapter one verses six through seven. Tonight's subject will be your faith will be tried. As a Christian, we must understand that our lives will be filled with trials and tribulations. And right now, many of us are either approaching a situation or a trial or tribulation. You're either in a trial or tribulation or you're coming out. So you, you're either approaching, you're in it, or you're coming out. But that's the way our life goes. It's like a circle and it's only a test. You're either in a trial or tribulation, approaching a trial or tribulation, or you're coming out of it. One or the other. Whether you're approaching it or in or coming out, understand trouble don't last always. There is light at the end of your trial if you just hold on. And I encourage you tonight, if you're in the middle of a situation, you must hold on. Don't give up. And many of us give up right when the breakthrough is right there. You have to press through that trial and tribulation because this life is nothing but a test. And it's preparation for eternity. You have to remind yourself, it's only a test. It is only a test. There is light at the end of your trial and tribulation. And I know some days it may get dark. Some days may get weary. But there is light at the end of your trial or tribulation. And you have to remind yourself, it's only a test. And if God before you is more than the whole world, the universe, worlds past, worlds to come is more than anything against you. But God has a purpose in everything we face. Our trial has a purpose and God has a purpose for us through everything we face. Understand, you will never know the power of God if your faith has not been tested. I mean, many of us want to have be people of strong faith, but if you never go through nothing... If you've never been through a trial or tribulation, if you have never seen the delivery, the, the deliverance of God in your life, your faith won't grow. So you have to understand, my brothers and sisters, trials will come. How many of us know trials will tr come? It's not a matter of if, but rather when. Your trial and tribulation will come. And don't let that scare you. Just be aware. Like a good soldier, when we when I was in the military, all we did was train for battle. Because we knew ultimately we will be going into a battle zone. It's not a matter of if, but when. And if you're like a, a, a soldier, you're trained up for the battle. When that trial or tribulation comes, you're ready, to, you're ready to face it. And the Bible says God will not put more on you than you can bear. God will not put more on you than you can bear. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10 says this way, There hath no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful, 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may not that that you may be able to bear it, that you may be able to bear it. But there are times you will have to bear it. And you have to tell yourself, if I'm in the middle of this situation, God has designed it for my life. He's put me in the middle of this situation because he knows that I can bear it. If you are in the middle of a situation, understand you can bear it. Just like a well-trained soldier ready for battle, you must be ready for your test. And the key to being ready is to trust the Lord. You must trust the Lord. You must meditate on his word and you must have a life that's prayer centered. Do you all have a life that is prayer centered? Understand this, my brothers and sisters. No Christian is immune from having their faith tested by fire. No one is immune from having their faith tested by fire. And when you are being tested, there is nothing wrong with you. I know sometimes people go through some situations and people looking at you in the middle of a fiery storm and they may be saying, well, that's, something's wrong with that person. No, you're not abnormal. It's just God's way of moving you to the next level. And many times it's not because you are in disobedience or sin, but rather God is trying to move your life to the next level of faith. Don't let people think that because you're in the midst of a situation, you've done something wrong. Oh, it must be sin in their life. Now, sometimes there may be. Let's be real. But oftentimes it may not be. It may be God that says, okay, I'm ready to move this person to the next level because I have something greater for them. And the only way they can receive that greater gift I have for them is if I have to build their faith. God is trying to move your life to the next level of faith. You, you see, the Bible says faith of a mustard seed can move the mountains in your life. That's all the faith that we need, the size of a mustard seed. But that is not all the faith that we as Christians should want. We should want more than faith of a mustard seed. But be real. That's all you need to move some mountains in your life. But if you begin to grow past that mustard seed faith, then you can really see the hand of God move miraculously in your life. I'm reminded of the centurion. Do you remember the centurion faith that made Jesus marvel? The centurion, the soldier, had faith that made Jesus marvel. Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, marveled at the faith of this centurion, this Roman soldier. And it's, only, it's the only recorded time in the Bible that Jesus responded this way. Who was this man that demonstrated such great faith? This is the only time Jesus ever responded in the Bible to someone's faith. He said, who is this man that demonstrated this great faith? Now, was this man a rabbi? Was he one of the disciples? Was he a teacher? Was he a preacher, prophet, apostle? No, he was a Roman soldier. He was a soldier in the Roman army. And the soldier asked, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my house just say the word. Just say the word. See, the soldier understood authority. And he understood that Jesus had the authority over the sickness of his servant in his house. He knew he heard about this Jesus who was healing the sick, raising the dead, opening blind eyes, unstopping deaf ear. And this Roman centurion took that same, took the authority that Jesus had over these sicknesses and said, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my house. Just speak the word. And sometimes you have to speak the word to the word. Sometimes you have to speak the word to the word. And you may say, who is this word I got to speak the word to? John, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything that was made. How many of you agree just when you think we got this thing figured out, something else comes up? Just sometimes when you got you think you got this thing figured out, something comes up. Understand this, we can never anticipate when something will come up. We can really never anticipate when the next fiery trial will come. And understand my brothers and sisters, 
No trial is fun. No trial or tribulation is fun. And understand this, trials will bring grief. They can hit us hard. And oftentimes we don't understand why these things are happening like they do. Why do these things get out of control? But let me remind you, when you think that your life is out of control, understand that God is still in full control. God is still in full control. When you put your trust in the Lord, he has total control over your life. Nothing catches God by surprise. Many of us feel that when something happens, that God must be caught off guard. Nothing catches God by surprise. He says, he who, he who never slumbers or sleep is watching over you. So when you lay in your head at night and the devil's trying to, trying to take control of your mind and trying to bog you down with the cares and concerns of this life and this fiery trial you may be in the middle of, you have to rest and assure that if God be for you, who can be against you? You have to understand that while you're sleeping, he's awake and he's on his throne controlling and directing every step of your life if you put your trust and hope in him. If he cares about the sparrow, I know he watches me. If God cares about the sparrow, I know that I am much more, much, much, much worth, more worth than a sparrow. And he says, not one sparrow falls out the sky that he does not know about. So if God cares about the sparrow, understand he cares about you. And sometimes you got to remind yourself that God loves you. God loves you and he never changed. And once you become a child of God, he never changes. Once you become a child of God, you have to understand he is your father, Abba Father. He loves you. He loves you. He cares for you. He cares about every part of your life. I know we have friends and families that may turn our backs on us. Some people may love you today and hate you tomorrow. Some people may like you today and not like you tomorrow. Some people may love you and in the next minute they're not talking to you. But understand, my God says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change. We may change. But my time is most high God never changes. And if he cares about a sparrow, the Bible says he knows the number of hairs on our head. If God knows the numbers of hairs on, on your head, why do you think he does not care about the situation you're in? You see, understand family, trials will test us with fire. Trials will test us with fire. And how many know fire can burn at times? And trials can get hot sometimes. See, I don't know about you, but I've never been in a pleasant trial. And there are some trials that are just downright hot. There are some situations I've been in. I, I, I know it was the hand of God that brought me out of that situation. And I know that some of you all have some trials and some situations that you've been through that you know it was only the hand of God that brought you through. I like to refer those trials to like our Red Sea experiences when the Israelites and Moses were leaving Egypt and they were facing the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was barreling down on behind them to go back and get what left Egypt. They were trying to get them and bring them back to captivity or maybe even take their lives and Egypt and here Israel standing at the Red Sea. They can't go forward because the sea was there. They can't go back because Pharaoh's army was barreling down behind them. Then the hand of God, he told Moses, Moses looked around and said, Lord, what, 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 what must I do? God says, use what's in your hand. Use what's in your hand. So Moses stretched out his hand with that rod and the sea split. And that's probably, probably the only time in documented history that the Red Sea had footprints on the bottom. Right there is the praise break. That's the only time that the Red Sea had footprints on the bottom. Because God is a deliverer. God is a deliverer. God is a deliverer. He will deliver you from every circumstance you in. If you put your trust in the Lord, when you put your trust in the Lord, know that God will deliver you. 
I don't care how dark the night may be. I don't care what friends and family may be saying. I don't care. You, we may have a Job wife in our life that says, just curse God and die. But we need to stand like Job and say, woman, you sound like a fool. We must trust God that he will deliver us. And there are some trials that will be downright hot. And when they are hot and fiery, you must speak the word to the word. God is the word and he responds to his word. See, many of us want to speak our words to a situation, but you need to find a scripture, some verses, and you need to meditate on those verses day and night. So when you are in the midst of your trial, you will speak life. And the life is the word of God. If God be for me, who can be against me? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. How about Jesus is the rock of my salvation? And why do we call him a rock? Because a rock does not move. He's a mountain of my salvation. The winds may blow and the buffets may and, the, and they may buffet at me and the winds may blow and the sea may rage, but the rock of my salvation will not move. How about the peace that surpasses all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind? Amen. Let's look at verse 6 from our text. And again, we're coming out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Let's look at verse 6. Verse 6 states this, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in the heaven heaviness through manifold temptations. This verse points to the fact that these trials are needed. Yeah, let me say it again. These trials in your life are needed. Furthermore, it refers to the time when this earthly sojourn or this going through this earth will be finished and the trump of God sounds and we shall be changed. This, this life, as I said earlier, is nothing but a dress rehearsal for eternity. Our life is nothing but a vapor. You're here today, gone tomorrow. How many know that? People are here today and they're gone tomorrow. You look up and you realize, me, I'm almost 50 years old. And I used to think back in the day that if I'm actually 48, but I'm only two years away from a half century. Some of you all may be a little older, some may be a little younger. But there was a time I looked up and I thought 50 was so way out there. I remember when my grandfather was around 50 years old. And I thought that was so, so far away. I thought he was an old man. And I'm looking up like, man, what happened? One day I was in middle school. One day I was graduating from high school. One day I'm coming out of college. Next, you know, I'm knee deep in midlife. <laughs> midlife crisis. Wow. It happened just like that. You look up and you're like, man, I, I'm an old head. <laughs> And I remember I thought 50 was old. I remember I used to think that. And now I look at it, that now that I'm 50, I don't, I'm not old. I know they tell me I'm approaching AARP, but I'm like, man, I'm not old yet. I still got a lot of life in this body. Anyway, I revised that thought process. I'm not only get, I'm not getting old, I'm getting better. Amen, somebody. I'm not getting older, I'm just getting better. But there was a time I thought 50 was old. And you look up and you realize, man, my life is passing by my life is passing by understand brothers and sisters God is not playing with your life God is not playing with your life you are not a puppet in the hands of a puppet master God has a purpose for your life God is not so mean and God is not trying to torment you or destroy you but rather he's we are being shaped into the very image of Jesus Christ your trial and tribulation is designed to shape you in this sanctification stage. Right now, if you've been saved, we're going through the sanctification stage. And when we go into eternity, you will become glorified. You will be just like him. But right now, we are being shaped into the very image of Christ Jesus. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says it this way. But we... But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So in essence, the Holy Spirit lives within our hearts. We are being changed into Christ-likeness, with the glory getting greater 
and greater. How many of you all know we're being changed into the very image of Christ? We are being changed into the likeness of Christ. We are being changed. And the Holy Spirit alone can make us what we ought to be. It's because of the finished work of the cross. It's because of the finished work of the cross. Understand this. When you get through this trial, when you get through this tribulation, and you will, I know you may be in a, some of us may be facing financial stress. Some of us may be facing some type of health illness, health crisis. I have a cousin, first cousin, he just lost his 33-year-old daughter suddenly. And he's faced with two grandsons he has to raise now. That's a crisis. That's a trial. He did not expect his 33-year-old daughter to die. And I ask you to keep my cousin in prayer. My cousin Andrew in prayer. Keep him in prayer. These trials are not designed to break you. But rather, your trials in life are designed to shape you into what Christ, into your Christ-like image. Many of us like gold and, and diamonds. And I was telling this to my daughter the other day. She's a little boy crazy right now, right? She's a little boy crazy and she got little boyfriends and stuff. And I don't frown on that because I don't want her to go out there and be like, uh, I've seen parents that are like, you better not talk to no other child. You better not, Don't you ever let me catch you with a boy. And all they do is rebel. But I make sure she understands, right? And I teach her and I train her and I, and I teach her like, hey, in this day and age, Liking a, the, 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 um, liking a, a boy, that's a good thing. Because God knows these kids are in so much stuff. So this day, I'm happy my daughter likes boys. But we've got to keep it under subjection. we got to keep that thing in the right, in, in the subjection. So I was telling my daughter this. And I'm telling you this about your fiery trial. I said, baby, what you have is precious. What you have is worth more than gold. What you have is worth more than than any than the world's biggest diamond. And it's so precious. Don't become common. Meaning, baby, don't be like the rest of these folks. I know your friends out there. She has a little girlfriend who turned 17 who's pregnant now. And when you're a virgin at the age, they make you feel like it's something dirty. I remember in high school, oh, don't say the V word. I'm not a virgin. No, good well you was a virgin but that was looked upon as like back in 1990s and 80s back then it was looked like well, you better not tell somebody you're a virgin and I can only imagine what the kids are dealing with now in 2020 but I told my daughter what you have baby is precious and we all know that precious jewels and diamonds people would dig for because they know they have value. And any man that wants you, he better work for you and dig for you and come correct because what you have is precious. Don't be common like a rock in my front yard. I can go outside right now and find a rock and say, hey, and throw it on the desk. It has no value. That rock is not precious at all. But when you know what God has in you is more precious than any rock, you make sure that you keep that thing precious for the right person. And so I'm saying this. God is taking you through a trial is to move you to the next level. To move you to the next level of being Christ-like. He wants to develop you and shape you. And the only way God can get you into the image of his son is sometimes he has to take you through the fire. And sometimes the fire may seem hot. And sometimes you may feel like you're going to get burnt. But it's not designed to break you, but only mold you. And when you go through that fire, that fiery, that fiery trial and tribulation, you will come out as pure gold. You'll be so you'll be you'll come out so shining that you will know it was the hand of God. And when people look at you, they will know that the hand of God was over your life. So your test will be a testimony. God would get the glory, but you get the benefit because now he's moving you to the next level of faith. And right now we are in a darkened society and people need to see the glorious light of Christ Jesus in us. So as I, as again, um, I just want to give you all a glimpse into what I'll be preaching about on Saturday. Your, your, your fiery trial 
It's not going to break you. It's only designed to mold and shape you. Your faith will be tried. As a Christian, understand your faith will be tried. And I know that does not sound popular. Nobody wants to go through a trial or tribulation. But if you stand in prayer, if you're meditating on God's word day and night, and if you're and if, and if you're staying in the word and, and you're getting fed right now, if you're watching this, your faith is being increased because the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and it comes through a preacher teacher so if i'm speaking faith into your life right now that's how your faith grows that's the bible your faith does not grow on its own it comes by hearing that's why the devil does not want you all to hear the word of god being preached or taught because he knows faith cometh by hearing satan knows this word and he knows that the more you come to Bible study, the more you come to Sunday worship, and the more you've been preached to and taught, he knows your faith will be increased. So when you are in the midst of a situation and your faith is more than a, all you need is mustard seed faith, but the centurion had great faith. Jesus marveled at the centurion's faith. He said, I've never seen any faith like this. And this was a Roman soldier. This wasn't one of the disciples who was walking with him and, and watching him heal the sick, raise the dead. This wasn't the rabbis in the, in the temple. This was a Roman soldier who heard that about this man named Jesus. He heard what Jesus was doing. And he said, Matt, he said, sir, my servant is sick. And Jesus said, let me go to your house. Let me go to your house. He said, you don't got to go to my house, Lord. Just speak the word. And sometimes we got to say, God, just speak the word over my life. Speak the word. How many know once God speaks the word, it's settled? When God speaks the word of your life, it's settled. It's settled. And nobody can unravel it. When God settles your situation, nobody, nobody, no nothing, no angel, no demon, no person, no government, no president, no king, no nobody can change when God moves on your life. Amen, somebody. It's not designed, your trial is not designed to break you, but it's designed to mold you and shape you and move you to the next level of faith. And can Jesus brag on you say, I've never seen no faith like this. How many of us want Jesus to brag on us? I've never seen no faith displayed. I say, Lord, increase my faith. And you know when to increase your faith, you want to go through something. So when you are in the midst of a trial, you're in the midst of a tribulation, you're in the midst of a storm, it's so important to stay prayed up. Be prepared. Make sure you continue to pray for others. Make sure you are and, and, and you know you are staying before the throne of God. So when it won't be like something strange came upon you, but it's more or less that God says, you know, now it's time for me to take you, my sister, my brother, and move you to the next level so you can see, so you get to know me more. God wants you to begin to know him more. And the only way you're going to get to know God is when he's moved in your life. See, if we don't go through a trial, a tribulation at times, and it's not all the time. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I got more good days than bad days. <laughs> I have more good days than bad days. And to me, a boring day is a good day. But I know that God is working in my life. And I know that he's working in your life. And God, is all he's using this trial is to show you more of him. Because if he doesn't show you more of him, we as a Human beings have a tendency to get complacent and we don't move. We get complacent and we don't move and we start to complain. That's his human nature in a lot of us. But God says, I'm going to show you who I am. And we should be at the stage now that we never get complacent in the spirit. That we want to see God change and save some of our unloved or some of our unsaved loved ones. We want to see God move sickness from our body. We want to see God bless our ministry. We want to see God bless our finances. We want to see God bless our children. We want to see God, we want to see the hand of God over our life. And when you want to walk with God, the only way to really get to know God in his true power and his true and his true glory is to sometimes we have to go through a 
fiery trial or tribulation. But understand this, it's not designed to break you, but to build you and move you to the next level in Christ Jesus. Amen. So tune in to Sunday. Uh, we'll be finishing up this topic. Your, your faith will be tried. Your faith will be tried, but it's designed to move you, not break you. It's designed to move you, not break you. Saturday, we have our missionaries. Again, they're giving out food from 11 to 12. They are feeding our community at Garrison Boulevard. Missionaries are doing a great job. Um, they feed families. So from 11 to 12, we'll be out there in the parking lot giving away. Our goal, again, is to give away the 10 to 13 bags of four groceries. And the grocery bags they're giving away are feeding families. These families are walking away with bags that will feed them for several days. These missionaries are doing a heck of a job. And I'm telling you, when you put Christ Jesus first in your life, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. That's the key to get a blessing, my friends. That's another topic for another day. When you put Christ first in your life, and he's truly reigning supreme over your heart and mind. He's truly king of your life. And he, he, he is truly the God of your life. And he's truly first in your life. Then... He will begin to add because now he can trust you with the good gifts that you won't turn back. Now, I mean, no, there's no going back. There is no going back. <laughs> Once you set Christ, there's no turning back. And as the verse in Peter says, for those who turn back, it would be better if you had not even known. That's powerful. To turn your back on God after knowing him, it would be better you had not even known him. But I thank God for you all tonight. Father God, we thank you for your, for these folks who tuned in with us on this Bible study. We ask you, Lord, to bless them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You know what they're going through, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to protect them and keep them, Lord. Cover them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless their families. Give them a good night's sleep, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to continue to feed them with the word continue to feed their physical body with food, Lord. We ask you to bless their financial situations. We ask you to bless their sons and daughters. Bless their husbands and wives. Bless them right now in the name of Jesus. I ask you for a special blessing on my cousin Andrew who lost his daughter. We ask you, Lord, to bless him and keep him, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless her two sons, his two grandsons that are left without their mother. We ask you for the touch tonight, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to comfort his soul. And we ask you for all these blessings, which is in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. My soul says amen. Amen. Hope to see you on Sunday morning at 1030. I think Deacon Carlton Brown will be bringing forth the Sunday school lesson. And I'll be bringing forth, finishing up what we taught tonight. Your faith will be tried, but it's not designed to break you, but to build you. Amen. Have a blessed night. God bless. Amen.